on this episode, we are coming back to our actual game. It's been 84 years. Immediately, there is struggle. Hey, first try. <laughs> it's not moving. But eventually, we get things to work. Now we're shmupping, baby. We're shmupping. Ah, uh, yes. Execute episode 66. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Christian from Lazy Defs Academy. <laughs> I had to do this. Welcome to the sexy sex episode <laughs> of, uh, of our shmup uh, tutorial. <laughs> this is going to be an excellent episode because what we're going to do today is we're finally bringing stuff together, right? So we've been working on the pattern editor. Right, we've been working on the pattern editor. We can create bullet patterns, we can create amazing bullet patterns. Oh, actually. Wait. Wait. Did I delete the pattern? Oh, there we go. By the way, I can make the, the game. <laughs> it's just too many patterns. I just click. I mean, it makes sense because every time I create a pattern, I create like 30 copies of the pattern. And so if I just click a little bit, it will just create too many bullets. There is limits to what, how many bullets we can create. Anyways, um, yeah, so we can create a beautiful, beautiful bullet patterns now. And the goal is to get those bullets into our main game, but also into our brain editor. I want to actually see the bullet pattern, uh, patterns in the brain editor. And the reason for that is uh, I've been thinking a little bit about this. Um, I'm especially worried about the boss fights. Um, the boss fights is something that I want to kind of see uh, in a kind of, some kind of preview window uh, before I get into the game. And um, the bullet patterns will also change a lot depending on how the bo boss is moving and so forth. So I think it makes sense to bring bullet patterns into the brain editor so you can see the bullet patterns in the brain editor. And then as a next step, as a second step, we actually bring this to the game. So first of all, let's bring bullet patterns into the brain editor. Okay, so now this will be a little bit of a, <laughs> will be a bit of a brain transplant, if you know what I'm saying, um, because we are, um, uh, I want to open two windows. On the left side, we have the pattern editor. On the right side, we have our brain editor. And I want to now just move things over from the pattern editor. The brain editor. Okay, so for example, here we want to include the paths. We're just going to include the paths, just like that. Bam, and that's it. No, <laughs> it's not quite it. <laughs> but it's we're we're getting there. Um, let's let's make another tab and call this uh, paths. Yeah, it's still it's still fine. It's still fine. Seven is still is still a good number of taps. I think when it gets to eight taps, then you get into trouble. But for now, it's okay. So um, we have two bulls. We I think we have already have two bulls. Uh, let's do patch shoot. Let's do double Q. Although that will probably change a little bit. So we're gonna see. And then we then that that's the the real that's the real thing. The make pad. I, I, I actually that's such a big deal. To make packed fun. Oop, do not cut. Do not cut, Christian. Just copy. Um, and we're gonna put that actually on top because this is such an important function. This is the one that is most likely to change as we expand our pattern editor system capabilities. <sighs> okay. Um, there's also some tools that I really like. Okay, this the spread. The spread is something I'm going to actually dump into tools. I think this is a cool tool. Cool, 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 cool tool. I like all of this and like all that. Okay. Um, all right. So this is the make pad. This is where pad shoot is where we're actually shooting stuff. And now I want to hook the pad shoot into the brain editor stuff, right? I, th I think I think we can leave this behind. I think we can leave this behind, right? Okay, I'm gonna save this. Okay, and now we continue on brain edit and finish the integration. First of all, just making sure that. So what I want to see now, see see how the the the, 
our UFO makes a makes a make that that's it it's it fires a thing, right? So I want to now say that it should fire uh, pattern number one in direction zero, so downwards. Is what <laughs> it's what I, it's what I want to do. Okay. Um. So let's just hook this patch shoot into our enemy into our enemy thing. Let, it's maybe just it will just work. Maybe that will just work. Um. There is a, there is a there, no that's do enemies um this is this is the one that's do brain right is it do brain something like yeah do brain okay so here we have like the fear function and that um, says fire bull for now but what we actually want to do is patch shoot e and then everything is the same right like enemy pattern angle that's it it's it's the same thing man well I think that won't work. It didn't work. Why didn't it work? Well, because we are adding things to the bullet queue of that enemy, and we're not actually processing the bullet queue. See, we need to do the do do bullet bull queue. We need to add this to the enemy update function. Um, so when we do do brain, not do, when we do do enemies, right? We're going through all this stuff, and then. Google Q. Uh, I'm actually want to maybe do this after we check if let's do something like this. So if the enemy is not on screen, we um, we're gonna delete it. Otherwise, we're gonna um, do the do the bullet queue. Let's let's see if that works. We'll just drop in. Uh, this is a bit weird that it doesn't work. Well, let's let's start debugging the stuff. Um, so, okay, we we assume it it, it actually fires, right? We assuming it actually fires, but just for just just to be to be sure, we're gonna go add debug fire. I'm just gonna just gonna add add a little a little fire command here. Okay, uh, so we know that patch should gets executed. Um, and we're gonna see if we've got if we're getting a bullet into the bullet queue. Bull. Okay, we're getting definitely this this part is executed. We're definitely getting the bullet in the bullet queue. So now I want to see if we um, yeah if this is happening. It's not. So this do bull, uh, do bull queue, that's not happening. I think when we create the enemy, we just don't are not creating a bull queue. That is the problem. So let's do bull queue equals empty. Just create a bull queue here. That is not the problem. Just, 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 just it's so weird. Oh, now it's being executed. Okay, so now this happens. Um, what might be happening is that we actually don't have a bulls array. Yeah, we probably don't have a bulls array, right? So let's let's just finish that. No problem. Let us uh, open pad edit and and get the bull stuff also set up. So it's something like here. Uh, 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 uh. Enemies, bulls, right? Um, but and not just this. I also want to um, have the do bulls function. Do, I don't have the do bulls. Do bull queue. I don't have the do bulls. Okay. So let's put the do bulls up there. Uh, okay. So when this this goes in update function, update setup. Uh, let's do do bulls before we do the enemies. Thinking like this, I don't know if before or after. That's something we have to figure out if we're gonna do the doubles or after or before the enemies. Um, the thing is, like when we do the doubles after the enemies, then once we fire a bullet, that bullet immediately um, moves. So it never actually appears where it spawns. It always spawns a little bit off from where it's, it should spawn, which might be good actually. We have to we have to figure <clears throat> we have to figure this out. I don't know. Um, let, let's let's do it afterwards. Uh, it seems like maybe maybe that might be good. It's still not working. What the heck? <laughs> we need to do bulls 
both. We actually have to say which array we're going through. Oh, we're not drawing the bullets. Mm. <laughs> There's always something, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Trails. Um, we're drawing them on top of the enemies. So here's where we're drawing the enemies. And here's where we're drawing the bullets. Now. Hey, first try. <laughs> it's not moving. <laughs> It's not moving. <laughs> Why you do this to me, game? Oh, that's update setup. That's update setup. That's update setup, man. We need to... Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. It's good. It's good, everybody. Immediately, you see the advantage of adding the bullets to the uh, enemy stuff. You notice how we now realize that our enemy is actually faster than the bullets that it fires. That That's not good. So we did definitely want to maybe slow down the enemy or speed up the bullet, because that looks weird, because it, the enemy catches up with the bullet that, <laughs> that it fires. It's weird, right? Um, so maybe we want to maybe increase the timer, uh, or maybe we're gonna add some weight after it fires, let's, let's do a 30 frame wait. Yeah, definitely want to maybe, and then the uh, animate speed, let's, let's animate it to 1.5. Still catches up to the bullet, but now it looks a little better. Uh, also, I want to now see if we can fire it at the player. So we said minus 99 is um, kind of like, keyword for firing an aim shot. And there we go, it fires an aim shot. It always fires where we're it's supposed to be firing. Let's do a, mm, 0 0.2 just to like to see if we can have, yeah, we, have, we can fire sideways as well. Cool, 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 cool. Let's do an export here. Let us see if we can fire a more, a different bullet pattern. So this is the small bullet. This is the big bullet, burp. This is the, Ha ha ha, now that's a shot, huh? Pew! <laughs> you get shot by a smooth criminal, criminal right there. What about five? Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the, that's the, what about six? That's the chunk of spread. Oh, look at how good this looks. Now we want to actually fire downwards always because you can already tell like, oh, if I'm here down here and it fires this, I'm like, pfft, I'm just done for because it ramps into me, right? And what is about this? Okay, so this is, I think, um, the the big spread thing, right? <laughs> uh, immediately I see I probably want to um, uh, remove the bullets when the um, every time the loop resets, right? So I want to, let me go back to the full brain edit mode. Okay, so broadly speaking, this works. Now I want to do some tweaking. For example, I want to um, delete all of the bullets. I want to delete all of the bullets when um, the loop resets, right? Let me do a reset n. Uh, I want to reset the bulls as well. So you can see that bullets dis disappear when the enemy uh, leaves the screen. I think this is a little bit better so that bullets don't accumulate on the screen and so we always start with a fresh slate. And you know what? That's kind of it. It's so shocking, I know, but that's kind of it. I want to make sure that this works as well here. Yep, that's the same thing. Cool. Uh, one more thing is I want to maybe... Um, there was a... F last time around with, with the, the, the fire stuff, there was a, like a flash, and I kind of like the flash. Fire bolt. Yeah, yeah. See, let, let's, just, let's just add this. Let's just add this to our to our um, flash, to, to our um, local third equ equals false, <clears throat> and then third equals true. Uh, no, actually, well, <laughs> I, I know what we do. 
what are we doing? Alt B uh, equals number of bulls. And then after the, uh, we go through all of the stuff, we're gonna go if all old b is not equals number of bulls. Basically, I uh, there is a we might be adding multiple bullets per turn, per frame, and when that happens, I don't want to add a flash for each bullet that we spawning. That would that would that would look weird. So I want to only add one flash if there is at least one bullet that's been spawned. And you know, and I do that you know, by just like remembering how many bullets there are before we go through the queue. And if after the queue, the bullets, the number of bullets has increased, then we adding a, a muzzle flash. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, let's do an N here. Look a lot better now. The flash really makes it makes it pop, pop. Now the bullets are being always spawned in the center. And that's something that we have to reckon with eventually. Like there is, we don't really have a way of making the bullets spawn in different locations in the in the along the sprite of the enemy. And I'm not sure how to solve that. That's something that we're gonna have to figure out. Um, we might do a bullet modifier uh, that kind of shifts the bullet so it appears somewhere else, kind of like a move. But I kind of don't like that because then, I don't know, it's, it's, it's adds like another modifier on top of, of a potentially complicated modifier stack when we had like this spinning rotation thing that was like three different stacks of modifiers on top of each other. And then adding another one just to make it appear somewhere else. And then, you know, you won't have the same pattern appear. Maybe like there's like two cannons and they're shooting the same pattern. But then you have to create like two different patterns for, for those, for the left cannon and the right cannon. I kind of want to say like, shoot this on the left and shoot this on the right, right? That's how I want to communicate this. So I'm thinking maybe doing this on a uh, enemy level. So we may have like a fire left, a fire one, two, three command, and then we'd maybe define the multiple spots along the sprite where bullets can come out. And then we have different fire commands for the different spots. This is what I'm thinking. It's a little bit, we are a bit constrained by the fact that we only have two parameters here. I would have to have love to have like two more parameters maybe where we can specify the location at which the bullets are coming out. Anyway, I like this. This is good. Um, let's do an export here and and save. Now let's move on to the part where this also has to happen in the game. <laughs> we haven't looked at the game in a long time. Let, let's just let's just let's do what. Let's see what the game looks like. Cow schmup. It's been 84 years. But yeah, time to get the brain stuff into the cow map and to get the bullet stuff into the cow map. Ooh, listen, this is gonna be an episode where we always have two windows open. So it's one of those episodes. And yeah, um, some people would maybe suggest at this point, and that's not a, not a dumb idea, um, to, is to put all of the different things that you work, like for example, put all of the code that refers to bullet movement, uh, like the make bull, um, and all of the code that refers to the brain stuff, to put them into includable files. So I only change the code once and it automatically gets updated in a, in a different program. I think that's, that's cool. Um, I prefer to do this manually um, because um, the stuff might be written a certain way that works well with an editor, but might not work well with the uh, with the main game. And we already had like those examples where, for example, for an editor, the code must be maybe a little bit more robust because if we make a mistake in the editor, I don't want the entire program to crash. But once we go to the game, that code can be a little bit more brittle because by the time we go to the game, we kind of assume that uh, all of the uh, brains, for example, that they won't have some loops ha happening and stuff like that. So I feel like the code in the editors is always needs a little bit of an adjustment for, to work for the editor. Um, and that's why I don't want to have um, the codes as like libraries, you know, like as something that multiple programs can access. Um, in I think in a more, in a less constrained environment, I would maybe do that. Um, 
like in an environment that doesn't have token limitations and so forth. But for Pico 8, I think that this is, mm, I think there's a better way to go. It's not that much work. Uh, let's gloat the, I'm, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna copy everything from brain edit. All right. <laughs> Man, this is gonna be fun. Uh, okay, so this is the do brain, right? And look, this is a lot more sophisticated now. So let's copy this. This is the do brain. And let's put it on here. Boom. Uh, this extra robustness, we, we can see, see, for example, now we can delete this. This extra robustness, we can delete this. And then this uh, remove robustness. Yeah, this is this stuff. We can now remove this because th this um, this version of the code doesn't have to be that as robust. And I'm gonna just say I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna try it. Hmm. Depth doesn't work. I think um, the way we are updating the enemies, we're doing the do enemies. That's also different. Uh, let's, let's let's see do do enemies a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. Do the do enemies is also different. Let's just copy this stuff. Oh, this is this is amazing stuff. Blump. Do enemies has just got more complicated. Okay, it's still. Oh, I think and when we're creating the enemies, spawn n is also different, right? It has a whole bunch of stuff that we didn't have before, I think. Okay, my bra, my bra doesn't exist. Are we even importing brains? Yeah, we are importing brains. My bra is a nil value here. My bra is a nil value, which means when I'm getting the brains, e dot brain, I'm not getting a good brain here from the brains. Add debug. E brain. I want. I want to see what kind of brain we're doing dealing with. What? I. I it doesn't like to do a return. Um, Pico eight or Lua has like this thing where you do like a return in a function. There's something after return. It kind of like it gets very nervous about that because it could be a bug. Um, and so it doesn't want to let you do this, which is, I think, infuriating, but okay. Um, so how about we're gonna do a, we're gonna comment this out and then we're gonna do, uh, let me do, yeah, 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 uh, do, yeah, good. Wait, debug ebrain, hashtag, hashtag ebrain. Brain is nil value, ah! <laughs> we have a cell brain here. We need... <laughs> All right. Right, so how are we going to do this? Um, we're going to do n square brackets. So what is what is the brain? What is, what is the entry for the brain? I think it was like one or something, right? Let me, let me look it up. Okay, so the brain is entry number three. Does the... Will that work? Okay, o almost, almost. Just want to make sure that we are actually want to have the actual brain or if we want to have the reference to the brain. I'm not sure if that's actually... Yeah, yeah, okay, good. We actually don't want to have the length of the brain. We just want to have the actual brain. Oh, there is no on-screen function. There we go. Um, yeah, this is this one, this function, I'm going to actually put it like a to-do list. Better on-screen function. Uh, because this function is super um, janky, um, but for now it it will suffice. Okay. Uh, we don't have a do do bull queue. Um, let's you know what? Let's skip this for now. I just want to see the enemy for now. Okay, there we go. <laughs> hey. <laughs> A bunch of stuff is happening. Cool. Uh, now we can remove this debug. Oh, man, this was this was a difficult this was a difficult start. Why is depth? So you know what? Let's let's just do do brain one. Yeah, that's cool. 
Right, it now wants to do the pattern shooting. So we have the enemies. Now I we want to also add the the patterns. So let's get the patterns out. We're gonna dump everything into one big tab, which might not be wise. We're gonna add everything into this gameplay tab. Again, not wise, not wise, but it it it's the thing that happens now. Pat shoot. Do bull Q and do bulls. Okay, now, do we have bullets already here? I think we have bulls pre previously, right? Yeah, we have bulls. Um, do, are we drawing the bullets? We're we drawing the shots. Um, we're drawing the bulls. Uh, let me see, drawing. Is, is the drawing of the bullets any, any com more complicated? No, it's not. Now, the up, um, update function, are we doing the bulls? Do bulls. Yeah, we're doing the bulls. Ah, but we're doing it before of the enemy. We're doing the enemies, so that might be something that we should pay attention to. Um, so we don't always gonna do the bullets before we do the enemies, which makes sense, I think. And so that is gonna be in a setup. And I should have really just not copied this stuff. This is this is cursed. Uh, there is gonna do the bullets before we do the enemies. That's cool. That's cool. Um, Okay, and now I wanted to play this actually. Oh, I got hit. Oh, right, we're not including the patterns. <laughs> it's gonna be good, it's gonna be good, guys. It's, it's, it's all gonna be fine. Now we're adding the patterns. It's just like we're adding two systems at the same time, which is a bit cursed. It totally worked. It didn't show me a bullet though. Um, I think I commented out the firing of the bullets, right? Something I, I commented out something in the yeah do bull queue. I commented this out. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Killed by my pattern, by Loki Strucker's pattern to be exact. Yes, I want to see. Um, uh, sked it uh, if, if this is actually correctly replicating my level so we have one spawn yeah you should spawn like this entire thing here why why is it's not doing that it's spawning just one it's spawning just one i'm not sure why it's spawning. is it because of the on screen thing let me see Let's let's try this. Yeah, it's because of the screen. <laughs> Owned. <laughs> oh, this is too much. Let's 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 watch this again. This is just so fun. Oh! <laughs> no, again, again, again. I like this. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> now we're shmupping, baby. We're shmupping. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. So let us do a little bit of a check up on the to-do list. list. We have an any brain system, yes. Or any database interpreter, what commands, delete old enemies. I'm not sure if we have that. I don't know. Uh, bullet pattern system we do have. Now there is a bit of a small things list, and I want to put this this thing here a better on screen function. I I will will put this in, a, in a, on the top because as you saw this was causing some problems. The problem was that we only had one enemy appearing, and the reason for that is the enemies are spawning off screen. And so when they were moving, uh, the system flagged them. Oh, they're off screen then that means that they left the screen. It's time to remove them now. Um, so we, I, I, it's, this is like one of those little things where you have to be now, you have to like a two-step system where first when they spawn, they're not on the screen yet. And the system will not touch them and will animate them and wait until they actually enter the screen. And once they enter the screen, they're going to move around. And when they have been on the screen previously, and then they leave the screen, then we want to actually delete the enemies. 
So we're kind of waiting for the enemies to appear on the screen uh, before we check if they left the screen. That's not what we're doing right now. We're just deleting them uh, as soon as they are off screen, which means when they're spawning off screen, they will get deleted immediately. So we need a better on screen function and we want to code it a little bit more efficiently. I have some ideas there. Anyways, um, yeah, so we have some anilip and draw obj. We're gonna go through this. We're gonna go through this a little bit. Uh, merge splash system. I think we, didn't we already did that? Uh, I think we already did that. Freeze die in this overhaul. Yeah, yeah. I think we need to do that still. Uh, enemy scrolling in sync with BG. Uh, we didn't do that. Big Peter. Player dies if they get hit by a bullet. That's something that we're definitely doing already. Uh, any lip and a draw OBJ. I think we are doing that. I'm not sure what this means. <laughs> it's been a long time since I wrote this to do list. I will have to check out what any lip and draw OBJ means. But for now, I'm, I'm good with that. You know what? This is a good time for the doggy zone. That's right, baby. The doggy zone. Mm. We have successfully integrated uh, the bullets and the enemies together with the couch map. We're now going to continue working on couch map, making thing, sure that everything looks nice and tidy. But there's one feature that I still want to do, one last big integration that I want to do. And that is, in the brain function, we are seeing the bullets. I want to add, I want to see the enemy movement, not the bullets, but the enemy movement in the schedule editor the enemy movement in the schedule editor. That is going to be a big, big, big challenge. And I want you to just like think about this. I want you to think about this in the doggy zone. How are we going to now that everything is finished, like all the system, major systems are roughly sketched out and in place. How are we going to integrate the brain system with the schedule editor? Big challenge for the doggy zone. Yeah, and as always, at the end of each episode, I will say a big thank you and a huge shout out to all of the beautiful people who are supporting this show, who are making this show possible on coffee.com. Coffee.com slash laziness is the address if you want to check it out. Uh, today, I want to also read a... I want to read a longer comment by Farian. Not really a question that they asked in, uh, for me personally to answer this here now, but I, they, they did a question like this some time ago in Discord, and I think it's a cool question. So I want to read it out. It's a bit long, so but bear with me. So they ask, Hi all, I had a newbie type question about programming that was bouncing around my head in a shower today, and I'd be really interested to hear some advice perspective on this. Basically, it seems like the most problems in video game programming are solved and that, as a rule, there generally tends to be a few methods of achieving the same results. So my question is about the value of arriving at solutions as a beginner as opposed to jumping to inline uh, to copy a ready solved solution. I guess, in other words, if I want e.g. draw text with fancy animations, uh, is it worth for me to struggle for three days to come up with a method? Or is my time as someone learning the, even the basics better spent just looking at other people's methods for the problem, implementing it and spending more time writing other code? I'm always unsure how to balance this. And as someone who doesn't enjoy purely the act of programming inherently right now, I find it hard to know how much I should be subjecting myself to it if it makes it a bad experience and I'm less likely to continue. This is an excellent question. I love it. This is just such a good question because I think a lot of people are struggling with this. There is some... I think this not just only, that doesn't just apply for, to programming. To, to, this applies to a lot of things um, that are you know creative endeavors that are kind of like laborious hobbies or like art. I would say where it's like it takes a lot of time to develop something that is good, and you see all the people making amazing stuff, and you're beginning, and your stuff is not amazing, and you're struggling, and it's hard, and you want to jump to the part where you get to work on the real stuff, right? It feels like you need to get through the basics and the basics are already so hard and you struggle with the basics and, and you're not getting to the cool part where you're doing amazing stuff. And the question is like, can I just like maybe, is there some kind of shortcut there? Uh, and with the idea that maybe later on, once you do it a lot, the basics will be uh, so easy will get easier and then you won't need that shortcut anymore later. So my perspective on this is that this is a little bit backwards. Um, there is no shortcuts there. Uh, I mean, there are shortcuts, but the shortcuts won't help you in the long run. In fact, they will keep you trapped into this weird situation that you're in right now. Um, I want to question some of the assumptions here. This idea that um, programming is solved. 
that a lot of problems in program are solved and you know reinventing the wheel there, there is no value there I, I don't think that's true uh, and I think um, I think Farian has an art background and I think if you apply it to art it's kind of like the same thing you could also say art is solved like people know there is people out there who know how to draw an apple so why do I, as a beginner, have to learn how to draw an apple, right? Like, it doesn't make sense. Or there are so many people who already have figured out how to draw an apple. Why do I have to figure out how to draw an apple? It seems like it would be much, my time as a beginner would be so much easier spent drawing something that nobody has drawn before. Because you know, that's where the, you know, creating art, right? Why should I draw something trite as an apple? Uh, again, like because there's so thousands of drawings of apples already exist. Um, the idea of drawing an apple as a beginner when draw, learning how to draw is not true because there is something that that you know the world needs to see your apple right it's not that's not that, that's not it the, the goal there is for you to learn how to you apply your skills to create a result right and apple is an excellent thing to draw as a beginner because you learn how to shade and it's kind of like an easy shape to draw but it's kind of something that you see in everyday object you can compare you know what it looks like and what your drawing looks like there's like a lot of cool things about drawing an apple and in programming there's the same thing there's a lot of things that are, yeah sure you could just go to stack overflow and copy some code out or you can ask ai to draw to write the code for you but the uh, challenge here or the reason why you should do this as a beginner is so you learn it so you know how to do the easy stuff so the easy stuff gets easier so you can you know so that's how you get better at the easy stuff and i think there is also another assumption here that i think is key and that is like this idea that you're struggling with this and therefore um you want to skip this you, you like you don't have a good experience doing this and therefore you want to skip this the way to solve this problem is not to skip this instead the way to solve solve this problem is to discover the joy of doing this stuff like um i think a lot of the bad experiences of programming are linked to the fact that you feel disempowered you feel like you're out of your depth you feel like you cannot achieve stuff um, and the way to tackle those difficult challenges, because they are difficult, right, is to feel like you can do stuff, that there's things that you can personally achieve, right? That there's like, ah, I can do this now. I, I, I cannot do a lot, but I can do this, right? The way to achieve these kind of like aha effects where you feel like you're empowering yourself, like you're learning, is to do the small stuff, not the big stuff, the small little things. Making a nice little text animation is a perfectly good example. Or making like a sorting algorithm, just figuring little stuff by yourself is cool because you feel like, oh, I did this thing. I, I made, like, I, I know how to do this little thing now. And now I can take this little experiment that I did and I apply it to something bigger. I can upscale it bigger and bigger and bigger. You have, you have the basics that you build on top of. And so I think that experience, again, come like from this idea of disempowerment from not being able to do stuff. And the way to approach is not to skip the, the stuff that you cannot do, but build up the skills to go through this success experiences that make this entire process, this struggle, more enjoyable. Now, I will. There is a bit of a caveat. I think there is so, certain things about programming that are kind of like they're solved, right? Like I think sorting algorithms. It's cool to go through the exercise of writing a sorting algorithm yourself, that's cool. But in the long run, you will probably copy somebody else's sorting algorithm, right? Um, so yeah, it, you definitely get to the sometimes to the positions where you just copy somebody, uh, some people's code. But I would say that especially something like draw a fancy text animation, that is, you, that dude, don't skip that. That's the best part. That's the most fun part, especially if you have an art background. That's where you really can, you know, flex your skills and experiment and 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 try out stuff and see how it works. Like this is where you get like those fun experiences of programming. Long question, long explanation. Next episode, one of the biggest challenges yet. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.